When last we left our intrepid adventurers, we were shopping. Yes, we were shopping indeed. Uh, we had finished. Um, we successfully mopped up, prevented the uh, the Great War from having its outcome changed. So we are we are successfully fighting pain slavery, which is what we should have been doing this whole campaign. But other people had other priorities. But whatever. Anyway, in the process, we wiped out an army of doppelgangers and uh, serpent priests, and they had some loot that survived and stuff. And then we went back to Allenway and we looted the doppelganger facility because there were no doppelgangers left that we knew of. <gasps> They're dun, doppelgangers. Dun, dun. Well, actually, Krosis has this thing that lets him detect doppelgangers. I thought I was going to have a thing to detect doppelgangers, but it turns out the true seeing is nerfed in fourth edition. <laughs> Mostly just said they're like, well, we gotta make something true seeing. Let's just throw yeah. the name on something that's very yeah. true seeing esque. Yeah, it just lets you see through invisibility and uh, illusions. Uh, con- co- uh, no, not illusions. Either. No, I know that's that bad... concealment. Concealment. Uh, okay. So someone's partially or no obscurity. Obscurity. So they're obscured by mist. You can see them but perfectly. That's explicitly not what it used to be. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you can see yeah. through invisibility and like mist and darkness, I yeah. guess. Well, yeah, it gives dark vision. Yeah. But I don't need that because I already have dark vision. So. so, yeah. I've been all excited to have the uh, the Ion Stone of True Seeing. Mm. I thought it was being really cool, but. He, he got ripped off. The guy's like, yeah. yeah, this thing will let you see through illusions. And he walks away and he's like, what? It's not working. Well, you can sell it back to me for 20%. <laughs> You've, so I erased him from history. It would be you let you see through his bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out I never bought it because I erased it from history. <laughs> and instead I got, what was it, a, a laurel circlet, I think it's called. Uh, it gives bonuses on diplomacy and uh, insight. It's the, it's the insight one I was really after because I've got a wisdom of ten and I really need some insight here. I also retrained my athleticism for insights. So. Uh. Anyway, whatever. Uh, we did shopping, and we're doing it in baseline. It's been a long time oh. since we've hung around in baseline for a while. We've spent all our time in the past. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and we, where did we shop anyway? We've been avoiding Allen Way because we don't want to see it being. Yeah, we devastated. didn't exactly specify. I, yeah. I guess it was Graybridge because it must have had to be near a wing. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. Greybridge it is then. A city we had just saved, but, except they don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have done this while you're back in time. Go to statue to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, we never, actually, we never actually went there to save it. Yeah. We redirected the army that was attacking it to the Udpocalypse. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I guess we were in Greybridge shopping, and a way in showed up. Uh, one of the gnomish caravans mm. and a how did it go a, a messenger came well, Wayne for... was nearby and a, there was a group sending and Great it was a, and it was sending, a special yes. type of sending a gnomish called gnomish sending, sending <laughs> where the name of the gnome counts as only one word of the sending no matter how long <laughs> so they got uh, a sending saying <clears throat> Your presence is requested by the illustrious Parsimware de Anderstock, Elmiriam and Turin, Ex Zeniba Don Lagar, Wen Taruk Par Caraba da Syria, and Susan El Tomastonia, <coughs> Can Elzenar Goldsweller, Settler of Deaths, Rich Beyond Counting, Retriever of the Irretrievable, Zombie Slayer, The Untouchable, The Unfindable, Finder of the Unfindable, Wine Taster of the Decade, Master Flautist, Silver Teeth, Deceiver of Elves, Paragon of virility, champion sportsman, possessor of beauty beyond that which mortals comprehend, loins of fury, <laughs> beloved of the court, the sly, crusher of hopes, goblin slayer, freer of Conan, caster of the seven winds, entrusted with the sacred heart of Geneva El Peren, jewel maker to the Duchess, nice abs, never lost a bet, climber of mountain, who, mountains, whose love women of all races desperately seek, the two faced. The well-dressed one, gossip extraordinaire, with the irresistible smile, cruel witmaster, wild card, the cleverest, with eyes that kill, master of ballroom, indomitable, loveliest in the wane, sexy legs, knower of secrets, debate champion, captain, collector of rarities, the dancer, slayer of the butcher of Brackenridge, <laughs> walker in two worlds, prize fighter, troubler of Zareeb, the merciless. At a meeting at such and such <laughs> <Yeah>. location <laughs> in the wing. 
<laughs> what so could, he's to, added to, a few things yeah, in to, to, uh, to settle your debts. Butcher, yeah. butcher of Bracken Ridge, yeah. yeah. One, one could totally abuse the um, the Gnomish sending thing uh, but by it, just finding people with names that encoded the information yeah. you wanted to send. Yes. I suppose like, that's true. I mean, gnomes are very, like are very. Calling, calling they would the never weapons. gnomes. Anyone who whose name would count as a gnomish name would never use their name to like um, falsely add stuff to add information. But mm-hmm. if you did find the right people, mm-hmm. you could potentially do it. And there's probably some big registry or something somewhere. I mean. Oh, I see. You don't have to actually even find them. You're just like, you yeah, just refer just, to them. Yeah. Yeah. Reginald, ever, ever hear of... Reginald the Thief is yeah. hiding out at Abigail the Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you just get Go back and hide and give it up. Admin, put admin privileges for the database. You can find whatever you want. I'm just trying to think what Abigail did to earn that name. <laughs> hey, can you hold it for a bit? <laughs> She just has every kind of parasite. <laughs> it's more like a condominium. <laughs> I guess a gnome might be proud of that. I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, right, so yeah, that guy. <laughs> and we're like, oh yeah, that guy. Ah uh, yes, finder of yes. the finder. Yes, and so, so Cricket, Cricket was, he's the guy that... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, I... Um, uh-huh. Okay, so... Okay. <laughs> Serendipity has a bit of a gambling problem. <laughs> She's a recovering gambling addict. She racked up an enormous debt, and that guy uh, managed to get a hold of it uh, and basically demanded that she either repay the debt or pay it in names. And this is his deal. Yeah, that's why he has. That's so why many he's names. got that ridiculously long name is because he's been going around and getting other people's names. Uh, Two facedly swindling. Them. Yeah, <laughs> Two faced is one of his names. Yeah, this is not really considered proper gnomish behavior. But you need to earn your names. But he's been doing it on the sly, mm. and apparently it's been working. And he's so. very famous for his long list of names. And he's got he's mm. got like four new names since the Butcher of Bracken Ridge yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. there'll be three. But yeah. Little does he know that the name he got is is a fraud. Mm. That's true. Yeah. And the the causer of Bracken. One, one of the names he got was Two Walker of Two Worlds or something. That's one he got afterwards. Yeah, I was yeah. actually wondering if we were gonna have to figure out what anything that about that, like. But, eh, well, we'll see, won't we? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, Cricket asked Serendipity, would you like me to kill him now? <laughs> because mm-hmm. I, I've offered that at several <laughs> occasions. I am an assassin. <laughs> I am your assassin. <laughs> I could go kill him. Be but, very easy. <laughs> but she she has enough money to pay him back now. Yeah. She finally is, She hasn't bought anything for ages, and yeah. she now has enough money to pay it back her debt. Because <laughs> the way he, he cast it was, or she, he made a deal that she gave him one of her names now right. forever. And then she had a year to pay back her whole debt. Right. And if she failed to do that, then he had all got all of her names. Otherwise, right. that was the deal was over. He yeah. had to pay it back. So she has enough to pay back the debt. And so, s- question: Why not? You have Panadar. Go to the future after ethical adventures have crashed the economy with their massive amounts of gold. <laughs> take a bunch and come back and pay the debt. <laughs> but if we did that, we would introduce a massive amount of gold into the economy and crash gold. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no, we've been avoiding going any farther into the future after baseline, because if we go there, it shifts baseline forward, and then, it, you know, we, we are limited on what we can do. We screw ourselves. We close off options. Just see if there's, if there's yeah. a future portal that, that opens up into the bank vault. Mm. <laughs> If money was our only goal at this point, we could have it all. You know, time travel is such a overpowered thing. Yeah, time, time, time travel. travel. So that, why aren't you? <laughs> we have other priorities. We're trying to stop everything from being destroyed. Mm-hmm. Your adventure. What should you get destroyed? Should you get destroyed? Go off the adventure. <laughs> Where would we keep our stuff if everything was destroyed? Pocket, pocket plane. I suppose we do have the basement. We could put all of the world's wealth into the basement, <laughs> and then go into the basement and let the world be destroyed, and then just die, I suppose. Hey, just buy a new uh, world. Yeah, die rich. <laughs> <laughs> buy a new world. No. I think we've been doing all right. <laughs> Ooh, no. There's more we important things than money. 
do is the weapon will get destroyed, have Serendipity claim the title, the last of the gnomes, <laughs> and then go back and stop it. <laughs> World killer. So anyway. the Empire Party was invited, which was not to Serendipity's liking, because she was trying to keep it just between her and Cricket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because there was a huge feast prepared for them. So they fly out to the Wayne. And they come to this, this fancy tent, and the page waiting at the door welcomes them. What was his name again? The page, I don't know his name, <laughs> but they welcome to the feast that was prepared by Terence Duar, the man who made blue fish taste even better. Mm. Wow. So. I got the recipe off him later on. <laughs> which was difficult, because he was very secretive about it, but. Insane diplomacy. Yeah. Um, Find out with cheese. And mm. <laughs> what happens if you turn blue fish into cheese? Mm. Um. <laughs> the page asked that they leave Lucy. business till after supper, so everyone sat down. The, from the other end, the guy comes in, and he was introduced by name again, which I won't do right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, blah, 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 the merciless. Yep. And again, I asked, you want me to kill him now? <laughs> Please. Cricket, intru- Cricket introduced serendipity quite effectively, and then began spinning tales. And there was a diplomacy off between this guy and Cricket for who was like cooler and more had a cooler life turns out it was serendipity it was kind of tricky because like half her names are things that we're trying to keep secret mm. you know? so I really had to focus on that topper of towers thing yeah. that was the, pretty much the only thing I could uh, freely discuss without trying to explain how it is that oh yeah she saved a bunch of children <laughs> from something I can't tell you about. Well, that's easy enough to like sixteen years ago. A little bit, right? Yeah. You can just tell them parts that are safe. Yeah. Leave out the in between details or just make them up. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't want to lie about her name, but you can lie about like the yeah the minor details that aren't important to the primary event. Doom the way is a little tricky though, because I mean, yeah, <laughs> she delayed the end of the world by a week. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you do include time travel, it's going to worry people. <laughs> Don't worry, you take tomorrow, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that doom happened a long oh, time ago. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So they had their meal, and they were both trying to... Each had their own... Because he had his, like, announcer guy. Uh-huh. She had Cricket, and they were both... Yeah. You know, just... And he kept making offhand comments. Like, he, they weren't directly talking business, but they kept commenting about, uh, you know... Oh, yeah, six names. That's pretty impressive for a typical gnome. Even though that's, like, way more... Most gnomes are lucky to have two. So, I mean, it's lots of... You start with zero. You just have your name. You don't have any anything else. So, after supper, the negotiations started. Which should have been pretty straightforward. Except, she started saying she was going to pay him. And he brought out this document that had been sent to him, signed by her, saying that uh, saying that she would never be able to pay the debt and was giving her all him all her names now to avoid being exposed mm. as a you know, a gambling addict, etc. And it was signed by her, it's a legal document, legally binding. Mm. And it renounces the previous agreement. Mm. Oh she didn't sign that paper, like, right. needless to say. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, give me that paper. Put a little loop in there. Start doing that. Mm-hmm. Maybe she will. It's a fake sort of thing. But yeah. yeah. And was it a fake? Mm. Let's see. I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. I think is that about the time the plot poison kicked in? Yeah. Oh, so it seemed plot poison. Yeah. Everyone's head suddenly started swimming. Mm. And they all fell unconscious except Croesus and the page who had invited them into the tent. Mm. Partway through the, this thing, I, I realized, wait a minute, Cricket wouldn't have eaten any of the food. Mm. It's not her place. But as it turns out, it wasn't actually plot poison, so it's all right. Mm. And the page suddenly transforms into a small fairy, Stacia. Stacia being the um, mm-hmm. the fairy who had helped her pixie or whatever she has said, yeah. helped Croesus out of the chasm, told him everything was a dream, mm-hmm. um, and other things. Yeah. Basically, Approach we've got uh, now two major plot things yeah. intersecting. Sure do. Yeah. And so he's... Croesus is happy to see Stacia, at least in the sense that he's been sort of searching for her ever since. And he didn't actually encounter her when she made the deal with Serendipity. Mm. Um, and she tells him that she's really sorry about what she did. And ever since she tricked him, 
this way. It's caused her, she, I mean, she's tricked hundreds of people, thousands of people, but she felt really bad about what happened to Croesus, and she, that's never happened before. And she feels like in the time that they spent together, something, something has gone wrong with her heart, and her heart has this weird regularity to it that it never used to have before. Mm. And now... She kind of feels guilty about tricking people unless it's, like, not... Like, she used to do good tricks and evil tricks and all kinds of tricks, but now she only really feels... She doesn't really feel good about really screwing people over anymore unless mm. they really deserve it. And she wants... Has everything here so far? She wants Croesus... Uh, sort of summarizing the whole thing here, but she wants Croesus to either... She feels that their hearts are connected, and she, she either wants either to bring them together or break them apart, because it's causing problems for both of them, mm. having them connected like this. Which he said he can't really decide what he's doing until he finishes saving the world, so uh, mm. just get back to me after I'm done saving the world. And she's, I guess, okay with that. And then he's... And also he asks about, so what are we doing here? What's going on? Mm. She's like, oh, that's great. Don't worry about it. You'll love it. So <laughs> she, start, she explains to him the whole trick that she's doing. Yeah. He's like, yeah, this is good. I forgot how fun it is to have you around. <laughs> and so they go over and... Uh, the last thing they do before everyone wakes up, she goes over and swaps a piece of paper out of Long Name's hand, puts a new piece of paper in there, and then they, her and Cro, she pulls out two charcoal writing tools, like big markers basically, and one to Croesus, and they write all over this guy, and then they go sit down and she's like, just don't, don't give away that anything weird happened. I mean, I know that you won't be able to because you're terrible at that, but just <clears throat> do your best. They also put a fish on Cricket's head. <laughs> oh, yes, because um, Croesus was like saying that could you help the, her, you know, could you trick her into help her believe that she has a soul? And she's like, well, I don't know, but uh, check this out. She takes a fish and puts it on. Right, look up, look, she has a soul now. Croesus is like, <laughs> he has a soul. <laughs> <laughs> Croesus laughed. Yeah. I, sh I should also point out, Croesus was better at letting Stacia down easy than um, Ben Gerard was. <laughs> with the, uh, you know, Croesus wasn't like, I'm sure someone will connect with your heart. <laughs> uh, she would have actually been fine with breaking breaking apart. It's, yeah. But he didn't really let her down, though, yeah. so I don't know. We'll see. Still, I <laughs> just like that that turned out better for Croesus than it did with the supposed uh, Casanova Ben Gerard. So, yeah. And then everyone wakes up again. Cricket has a fish on her head. Cricket has a fish on her head. She comments on this. I have a fish on my head. Everyone is just really confused. They look over at the um, long-named guy, and he has the word nameless written all over him. And then he, he he's... He doesn't notice this, I guess. He, he's, he's, he looks at the piece of paper in his hand and does a double take because it, instead of the legal document, it says the council heard everything. And at that moment, the council members who are head of the Wayne, who have been hiding in the wings, come in and are, and are like, we've heard your disgraceful behavior with stealing names. And they start writing his name on the wall, which is how you unname a gnome. Mm. They start writing his long name on the wall. And he starts begging and pleading for, for them to take money, but they're just utterly shocked and just won't even... Just like, just like the, just just like a group of p kids in junior high who have who have ostracized their favorite, they just start writing his name on the wall, and there's no returning. Yeah. They tell him to throw the refuse out into the street. They huck him out into the street, um, and then his announcer guy starts saying, "Well, uh, so I guess I'll be going now too." <laughs> they said, "Oh no, you knew all about this," and they start writing his name on the wall, and they huck him out into the street. And the other random people who were just with him to like, because they think he's so awesome, they they're like so, they're like, and he says, and the counselors say, you'd better leave now before it's too late for you. And they all bolt from the room. <laughs> what guy? Yeah. We never hung out with some guy. Yeah, Serendipity doesn't even believe the Nameless exists, so yeah. now she's kind of stuck in a position where she has to believe that guy doesn't exist anymore. But. Yeah. I think she's happy to not, not think he exists anymore. So, so we oh, did I erase him. <laughs> I also forgot to mention that he thought the party invited him to this meeting ah. because of this <clears throat> document. Yeah. Right. So they were both tricked to this meeting. By Stacia, I guess. Yeah, yeah, to produce this outcome. Oh, Stacia also, well, she didn't reveal her true form because she doesn't have one, but she revealed her favorite form, which is not a sprite at all, but it's just 
a beautiful fae looking woman which closest closest remembered I suggested she had like giant mouth and stuff but that's, mm. a, that's a doppelganger so, so that guy got unnamed and no one ever has to say his name again <laughs> does serendipity get the butcher of Brackenridge back she did actually mm. uh, which is quite awkward because I'm right here <laughs> oh she took it back though mm. um, it needs an it asterisk on it now she should spell it with an asterisk yeah, interest. Yeah. The um and the the council members said that they're gonna actually form a group to try to find some of the people who had their names stolen. It might be difficult because some of them probably don't exist anymore. I think I could party them through. Well, more just that their whole names were taken away, so they'll do their best. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it worked out well for Serendipity and Crisis. Crisis asked Stacia to help them um, save the world. She said she'd try to think of a way to do it, but she can only do it if it's kind of tricky, because she just doesn't really like doing things that aren't tricky. I think <laughs> if she tries to think of a straightforward plan, she gets dizzy. Saving the world is pretty easy. Mm. Crisis's chaos creature thing didn't sense her, because she has a super epic scry. I think probably most of the players are starting to suspect who she is, but wasn't officially revealed. So. Well, we didn't notice her at all. We were unconscious the whole time. So. Oh, Stacia? Yeah. So we don't know Stacia was here this time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And if we did, I think Serendipity is the only one that's actually interacted with her. So. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I don't think the characters know anything. What did oh, she do to Crocus? Did we, did we encounter Stacia in Crocus's dream? Because All the fairies said that they were queen of the fairies, mm. and so it seemed like if anything was a lie. But Stacia yeah. is super epic, claims to be queen of the fairies, goes around tricking people. And that was pretty much the session. Yeah. Next session we're going to go and deal with the Sherpa Queen. Um, and then, I guess, the main thing left is trying to figure out what the heck with the obelisk and the dwarf forge. Oh, and also genociding the rest of the doppelgangers. It's what they want. <laughs> it's true. They want to die. You know, she left me alone and lied to me. And I wandered around being crazy for a long time. But I forgot how fun it is when she's around. This is going to be all right. Okay, so I woke up this morning and I wasn't Hank anymore. I'm Nastria now. Hi. So this is cool. Um, yeah, getting pretty much expected reactions about it. Um, this is going to be a fun ride. I'm also kind of getting my memories back, too. So that's, that's a nice bonus. I like being a Kalashtar. And don't worry, Hank's still here, too. Well, this is unexpected. I came here expecting to pay off my debts and, uh... Which would be a relief and have it all over with. But this is better! Oh, great! <laughs> oh. Hank is just different, you know? Like, okay, so I get it. He's inside there and it's just Dastria on the outside, but I don't know. She smells different and she talks different. and I miss Hank. He was like... He was my buddy. Like, we'd laugh. Everybody else would be sleeping. We'd be telling jokes and talking about stuff. It was, I don't know. It's just not the same. I wonder if this is how my sisters felt. <sighs> it's okay. I'm still Hank. I'm still Hank. But I'm also Dastria. I'm more Dastria. But I'm still Hank. It's cool. It's good. Just when you think that it can't get more complicated. Now Hank is Dastria as well. And not just in the standard Kalashtar way, because there's lots of legal precedent for that. <sighs> well, I am the best at figuring this stuff out, so I'm sure whatever solution I come up with will be the proper one. But yeah, I, I wonder what other curveballs will be thrown at me. Never see them coming, huh? Oh, and Serendipity has her full name back now. She killed me, apparently, according to her name. That's the second most complicated thing that happened this this little 
shopping expedition that we've been on. Well, it's all downhill from here. As, as in, like, downhill means it's easy. We've worked out where we're going. Yes.